be advised, you are coming in weak and unreadable. Say again, Con Tower. This is Con Do you read me, okay? Pacho, this is Con Tower. I read you Lima Charlie. Con Tower, Con Tower. Request permission to launch and commence the field up. Over. Stand by. Pacho, permission granted. Say again, permission granted. Pacho that. Launching podcast in three, two. You are now entering the field up. With your host, Pacho Correa, Chief Foreign Officer 3, United States Marine Corps, retired. Get some. All right. Get some. All right. What's going on, everybody? Another Friday, uh, Friday's Eve is upon us, or Baby Friday is another name I like to call it. So uh, before we get all started, let's uh, let's just get all the you know rudimentary stuff out of the way. This show is brought to you uh, by our sponsor, Castle Global Services. Castle Global Services has an old a wide array of a uh, bunch of uh, different things to offer. You go on there for your cable, internet, Wi-Fi, mobile phone, uh, utilities, electrical and gas, depending on the state that you live on. I highly suggest that you check them out because you get better prices. Also on the commercial side as well. Hey, you know what's what's re- you know we're in October, November time frame. It's we're in um you know an enrollment period. So if you're looking to switch and put some money back in your pocket instead of going through your current jobs, uh, uh, insurance services or, or medical, give Impact um, a check you know, right there on their website. So go to Castle, castleglobalservices.acnibo.com and uh, go on the Impact option and learn more about it. Hey, you know, put, it, put in your information in there and um, you know, no commitment, you, you know, they'll, they'll give you a call and run you through some, some things, but I, I I highly recommend it because I know they'll beat the the numbers. So, and this all, this show is also brought to you by the Constitution of the United States of America. Hayat! What does that mean? Is that hey, this show is all about freedom of speech as well as you know the right to bear arms. I stood for that stuff for many many years, and I still do. Um, you know, as a, as a veteran. So, what does that mean? Is that hey, if you like this show, go ahead and stick around, like, subscribe, and follow. Share me with your friends and your coworkers because we're pretty much all over the interweb. And uh, if you if you don't like it, then go ahead and move on to something else. Perhaps some from SitchRadio.com. They have I Podcast Dan, uh, Combat Vet Vision, among other different shows um, that are on there as well. So, with that being said, hey, my my next guest is uh, somebody that's near dear to our hearts, and as well as somebody who you know he is the unsung hero of this show. This is uh, you know Brian Coburn. Brian Coburn was in the Marine Corps. Uh, from the late 80s into the 90s, and then from there he transitioned on into you know into the private sector. But you know what? Before I get ahead of myself, let's bring Brian into the fold. <laughs> yeah, what's what's going what's on, up, homie? How are you, dude? It's always weird to be on somebody's show because I still have all of my work to do. But uh, thank you for having me, brother. No, you know, it's like I told you last week, dude. It's like, I, I mean, I know you're a fellow veteran yourself and a Marine at that. So, and it's like, wow, I can't believe I haven't had this dude here uh, on my show. And he's got, you know, a lot to share with us, you know, given your your experience and as well as, you know, you being uh, basically the backbone and foundation of the field up. So I just want to take the time to one, thank you for your service and thank you for honoring us with our show so thanks for you know thanks for being here man it's been a good time man you know you kind of pushed me a little bit with some of the craziness you wanted to do which i love um one thing about this job you you do the same shows every week right and i love it when they're like well i want to do this and and i have to conceptualize how we're going to get that done um is it a good fit for audio only is it a good fit for video and and you've pushed me a little bit so i thank you no, that's awesome. You know, but before we get, you know, ahead of ourselves, because I know we, we've pretty much spent some, you know, some quality time talking about everything, you know, let the audience, let, let's get to know you a little bit better. Tell us, you know, the shoes that you walked in, what's your background, all that good stuff as far as, you know, Marine Corps and so on and so forth. You know, I, I grew up in a in an extremely religious home. My father was a Marine as well, and he always told me to join the Air Force. Um, he wanted me to have a better life than what the Marine Corps gave him during the fifties, but I just felt called to join the Corps 
And I actually left Boy Scouts. A lot of people don't know this. I actually left scouting because I joined the Young Marines. And oh, wow. th- th- we had a active duty Young Marine unit at El Toro when it was still an air station. Yeah. Um, we were actually given an entire building there. So we had our own little barracks and, and all of that. But it was actually pretty good training preparing me for what eventually came, which was boot camp. You know, I knew my general orders. We did the PT test. I actually went to the gas chamber for the first time as a young Marine while I was still in flipping high school, dude. Wow. Um, so boot camp, it's a mind game, but I knew a lot of the games. So I could just calm myself and go, okay. It's not forever. It's just for now. Let me make it to lunch. And, you know, you get through it. So um, I joined the Corps right out of high school. I left three days after I walked uh, across the stage, grabbing my diploma and did boot camp. I turned 18 in boot camp and oh, wow. left boot camp, did MCT, SOI, went up to Vallejo. Cal- well, I, I had five days of recruiter's assistance. Uh, I was asked to go to school early. Cause I wasn't a very good recruiter assistant and you spent time in recruiting, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. I, I did it as a, as a boot and then uh, I was a recruiter myself. So yeah, yeah if, you, if, if, if you were worthless, boom, you were sent. <laughs> uh, yeah. I was worthless as a recruiter assistant. So uh, I went to school a little early, which is fine. Um, went up to Vallejo to Mare Island and went through uh, security force school. Then I pumped to Alaska for a year. Um, as punishment for having a little too much fun at security force school. So I spent a year of my life out in the Aleutian islands on ADAC. And, uh, dude, then I went to two, seven, 29 palms, ADAC, Alaska to 29 palms, California. Wow. What, what extremes hooked up with two, seven as they were just coming back from the first Gulf war. So now I'm a barracks baby hooking up with an infantry unit that went to the sandbox, you know? So, paid my dues for sure had to prove myself a little bit but i i I remember because we had i think it was 15 days of acclimation before you had to really do anything yeah and i check into my unit nine days later it's like hey we're going to bridgeport california my staff sergeant pulled me aside and said we're going to bridgeport you have 15 days acclimation but you're not a pussy right (laughs) i'm all in let's do this so we're humping from main side 29 ponds out to that flipping airstrip out. In oh, the yeah, middle. Yeah. yeah. And I was dying, dude, full combat load. It's, you know, hundred degrees. And I just come from Alaska and it, it wasn't, wasn't fun, but did that, did that pump. I, we did a lot of little stuff was with a joint task force with the war on drugs for a little while. Um, did my pump to Okinawa and mainland Japan, Fuji and, uh, ended up getting out because it was 93 Clinton was in office. I couldn't even reenlist at the time to stay infantry. Um, uh-huh. and I'm like, well, I didn't, I didn't join the Corps not to not be in the infantry. So right. I guess I get to figure out what's next in life. That was my Marine Corps journey, man. You know, it, uh, it's, it's funny that it really is a, a small Marine Corps. 93 is basically, you know, I depth in and 92, uh, and because I'm um because I'm an immigrant, uh, I was held back a grade and um ended up going, you know, I, I would have graduated and gone into Marine Corps 92, but because of that stuff, I, I you know, I went in, in 93. But you know, it's like you serve, you know, I was in Fuji, I served there for a year, and um, you know, and I'm very familiar with uh, as well with 29 Palms and, and that airfield, that's 370, it belongs to 374 actually which is one of the units that we used to serve when I was with 372. So it's just kind of like, you know, seven, deg- seven degrees of Coburn is what I like to call it. <laughs> yep. but, but it's very, you know, how, you know, what a way for your staff to, you know, to kind of like, you know, hey, you're not a little bitch, are you? And what, I mean, what are you going to say? Yes, yes, I am. You know, it's just like, okay, I guess, fuck it. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I I mean, dude, these guys, it's not like the unit saw a lot of combat during the first Gulf War, but right. You know, the stress of going to a war zone, the stress of crossing the line, uh, and then here I come from Adak, Alaska, where you know, we got excited when caribou would walk into the wire so we could hunt them, you know. But 
you got to do what you got to do, man. Had to prove my word. Yeah. By the way, uh, Matt Max Gilman is is right here on the horn. And uh, shout out to you, brother. And but he said he just put on the on the chat that 374 was deactivated, uh, and as part of the uh, read the four uh, the, the new the redesign of the force. Holy shit! So, but you know you and you're right. I remember when I so everybody when I when I when I came hit the fleet, it's like every sergeant and you know every sergeant they looked like they were fucking 80 years old. You know, like old as shit. Or maybe I'm just getting too older, but you know, the few times after I retired, and even when I was still in, it's like sergeants got kept getting younger and younger and younger. You know, you know what I mean? It's like, holy shit, does your mom you know you're playing Marine? You know, but you're right, you know, like those guys, as you know, I had, you know, and at the Marine Corps ball, you see these young Lance Corporals and shit with this huge salad bar on their chest from you know the Gulf War, and it's like fucking war heroes. Dude, think how the boot lieutenants felt coming to our unit, you know? <laughs> Friggin' butter bar and the entire platoons got a rack, you know, and then there were, you know, a few people like myself who didn't. But, dude, yeah. you know what's crazy you say about the sergeants? When we were pumping to Okinawa, they did the little manpower shift where we got people that were going to be in long enough from, I think it was 3-7, uh, and then our short timers went to 3-7 just so everyone could be <laughs> TO for the pump. And this Sergeant Lutz came over and he was <laughs> salty, calm, mellow. If he was yelling, you were beyond screwed. You know, it, it's he had that dad look, you know, to little kids. And he was kind of mellow. We played spades on occasion, drinking the Boone's Farm oh, in the barracks. In spades, um, baby. But so I got to know him a little bit, a little bit. I'm out like two years i'm watching the history channel and if everybody remembers iraq invaded kuwait and there was a marine unit there that went to the roof or th they were on the roof and they like wake up and they're surrounded by you know iraqis and it was him on tv talking about his experience on this rooftop calling for fire because that's all they could do um you know hitting hitting around them and i'm like holy crap that I I drank Boone's farm with him, you know, and he's this oh, guy. Like, they they were calling for fire so much, walking it in. They basically were told, look, tomorrow morning you need to be off that roof because there ain't going to be a building, you know? And they literally went downstairs in the middle of the night and just boogied to get out of town before, before it was leveled. But I'm watching this guy on TV and I'm like, that's so crazy that that was him, you know? Yeah. And, you know, and that was some of the experience that I had, you know, with these guys. And and as we move forward, you know, time moving forward, you know, I had guys that I, you know, I, you know, as much as I would have loved to be part of Fallujah. I mean, I was part of, um, uh, you know, the first push and everything. We, I, I helped, you know, I stood up and, you know, we helped. The, I was at I and I duty at a reserve unit, inspector, instructor. Basically, you're just permanent personnel. Um, you know, for basically you you're the host for the reservists when they when they come on deck and stuff like that. And we took, you know, that first unit to, you know, OIF, OEF, whatever, whatever, you know, whatever they called it and and everything. But yeah, we, you know, we had these guys from Fallujah. And um, you know, it's funny that, you know, you're talking to some of these fellows, and it's kind of like the if you follow the pattern, how they acted and behaved, the ones who really saw some shit, and in, I'm sure including some of the guys that you you, you know, you dealt with or encountered uh, when you first came in, um, you know, they kind of had that that same thing, like, holy shit, you know, these guys, I mean, and they're good, you know, they're, those guys are in history books, and so are these guys, you know, fucking Fallujah and everything else, you know what I mean? Right, right, and it's, you know, it, in corporate America, I, I used to run a rescue ambulance. We ran 911 in LA County. It was life or death. It gives you a different perspective of what's emergent and what's not. And then you walk into a corporate environment. They're like, oh, my gosh, this report's not done. You're like, relax, man. No one's dying. <laughs> no one's bleeding out. It'll get done. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's, that's, that's an emergency to them. And you're just like, OK, take a deep breath. You know, it's funny. So kind of to caveat of what you're saying, uh, you know, you know, I do safety and everything for a living. and. Uh, 
yes, the day before yesterday was a small one of the filters at one of the uh, you know suction booths where you know where they grind and that stuff is a down a downdraft booth. Uh, one of the amber, you know, a piece of hot piece of metal got sucked into the filter paper filter, you know, smolder a little bit, and it just smoking really bad. Anyway, so you know, I went over there. Everything was good to go. There's a dude that's a former firefighter that works with me as well. So we're like, okay, no big deal. That uh, so today we had a meeting. It's one of the guys, and I think this dude was just staring the pot. Said, hey, you know, how come nobody said, you know, evacuate the building? Blah blah blah. You know, just like, and I look, and I and, and I looked at him, and I know this. You know, I looked. I'm like, I'm like, really, bro? I'm like, say, I made the fucking call. There was no, it was no big deal. Everybody was safe. So. You know, but you're right. It's like it turns you. Our level of intensity is, uh, you know, not to hate on the civilians, but you know, this is our level of intensity and what we've seen and done. And then and, and this is it down here, like oh right. my god, right? You know, it's so. you know that whole improvise, adapt, overcome. We hear yeah. in every Jarhead movie. Yes. I, I was working security and it was a high rise in downtown LA and fire alarms go off. So I go cruising back there. Do, 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 you know, it's probably nothing. Um, and I look outside and one of those, you know, those bug zappers that have the neon lights in it. Yeah. I love those things. This hydraulic line broke and threw, started throwing fuel on it and it ignited. So there's a little fire inside this bug zapper. It's completely concrete all the way around it. And I look over and the engineers like freaking out and going, where's the hammer? Where's the hammer to break the glass to get the fire extinguisher? I'm like, I walk over, I break it with my elbow and I look at him. He's like, oh, <laughs> grabs the fire extinguisher. We put the fire out. But it's like, that was his hang up. He didn't yeah. know how to break that thin piece of glass. And it's, you've got a foot, you've got an elbow, get the job done. Yeah, fucking make it happen, chief. So, so they use your time in the core, and then you know it sounds like you did some EMS related stuff. So, how'd you end up, you know, opening or you know owning Sitch Radio and transitioning into telecoms, and you know being a broadcaster, basically? So, web was always a hobby. The the internet like amazed me, and I started learning to code HTML when it was like two HTML two before javascript i mean it was just it was ugly looking websites and i kind of grew that into a little side hustle i was coding people's websites for them back before when you actually had to code and right. a masonic lodge had the idea to do a podcast and because podcasts were on the internet i had to know everything about podcasts because i knew about the internet and I said, sure, we can do that. And I figured it out how to get it done really quick. And, and we produced a podcast in 2008. And it was, it was an awesome experience because, in my opinion, podcasting is like the last bastion of free speech. We can cuss. We can pretty much talk about anything we want about as long as it's not hate speech defined by the law. All I have to do is check a box that says explicit. And it's fair game. You know, it's right. extremely hard to get a piece of audio declared a podcast removed from a hosting account. And I, I love that about podcasting. So I did that. I kind of, you know, side hustled websites for a while. Um, I found myself a sales job and kind of kept doing it on the side. And I helped a friend with a podcast and more people started coming to me, podcast, podcast, podcast. So it was at the point where you run the numbers, you're like, I think I've got enough customers to open a studio and offer more services by having people come to me to record their audio. And I uh, pulled the trigger and did. Um, the, my partner that was supposed to be 50-50 with me, day one said, yeah, I can't do it after I just signed a lease. So that sucked. And then three people that said they would start shows with me didn't come on board. So that sucked. And because of my sales experience, I just hit LinkedIn. I started going to every networking event I, I could. I was able to generate enough customers to keep the lights on, if you will. And just over a year ago, we've relocated from 260 square feet to 1200 square feet. And it, we're, we're making 
I, I, I like to say we make, we don't make, we help people tell their stories, but we right. are a part of some really cool content being made right now and happy to do it. I mean, dude, I get paid to sit here and listen to you tell stories, you know, because I've got some buttons and a little knowledge and a few accounts and, you know, I can help get it done. And I've learned, we've had Bash Rutten in the studio. We've, we've had some really cool people. We got to work on an episode where Will Jimeno was being interviewed, where he was recounting his experience when the towers fell in New York. He was one wow. of the two survivors that were pulled from the pile. And wow. I, I'm hearing this firsthand. And this is, this is what really amazed me about that. I started to edit it. And I went, wait a minute. And I called Jeanette. Jeanette works for me. And I said, I want you. She, she understood the basics of editing. She wasn't an awesome editor at the time, but I wanted her to touch this piece of audio because she was one years old when those towers fell. She learned about 9-11 in history class. And for me to give her the opportunity to work on this piece of audio, the man telling the story himself was kind of cool it was passing that torch you know yeah. and just to be part of the content that we help create it's really cool really fortunate to be here no i think it, i think you got a great platform and you know and everything you have on i mean that's how you know it's fun again it's all that three degrees degrees of separation i met you through initially through uh aaron and at the warrior bill foundation and i mean i've come on i used to come on his show all the time and, you know, even to this day, I mean, I've, there's been a couple of times where I've come on to just kind of talk about my my issues and, you know, because his show tends to be a little bit more more serious, uh, not as lighthearted as this one. And, um, you know, and I just kept saying, dude, you know, I got this idea for this podcast. You know, we should just, you know, get together and bullshit. And I, and I get it. You know, he, you know, he's very busy at the same, I mean, the dude runs a, a nonprofit and he's involved helping veterans and, you know, he's got a lot of things going, a lot of irons and different fires as we all do. And, right. and then that's when, you know, when I reached out to you and I'm like, dude, I got this, this thing, you know, and you're like, Fuck yeah, let's do it. You know? And, and it's been a crazy ride ever since. So, and for you to be able to help out all these different pe people, I mean, Sitch Radio has got an, 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 I mean, an amazing platform of, different types of shows. I mean, you got anything from, you know, uh, what's the one with the latest coffee talk, I believe is that is, is it coffee talk or let's talk coffee where uh, Todd, Todd's doing some show. Todd DeVoe is an emergency manager and teaches at post-secondary level emergency management as well. He's doing a show outside of the studio um, behind a paywall on his own, but he is the host of business continuity today with me which is a corporate show. He is contracted with us to be the host for a show out of the UK oh, wow. um, that we produce. Um, and then he has his own show that we produce with him, uh, the Todd T. DeVoe show. And it's leadership, crisis management, things of that nature. But I mean, yeah, Dr. Anita has uh, her platform and she's all about the inclusive, inclusivity and diversity in the workplace. Um, we've worked with Dale Carnegie, Orange County on, uh, 411 of business. Uh, we work with 511 and their podcast called a service, which That's is, right. yeah, I forgot which about is that. a cool, cool story. Um, we have a few private podcasts, corporations work with us. And instead of giving out that newsletter once a month that everyone looks at and throws away, um, their newsletters audio. So all their oh, employees are given a private RSS feed that they can plug into any podcast player and they get the newsletter via audio and they can consume it on their way to or from work or whenever they want to. And it's not a piece of paper. So we do a lot of cool stuff. We've done books, audio books here. Uh, I mean, it's just, again, fun for me to sit here and work on all these projects. No, it's, uh, you know, that makes a lot of sense, especially with the newsletter. Cause I know I'm my current employer, they they do uh, you know a podcast and and now it makes sense like, oh it's a newsletter well no kidding yeah so you could be you know you could do that intern internal because how many of us really I'll be the first one to tell you when I get, when I see that newsletter email blush you know but it's it's much easier for me to listen to it you know 
you know, someone in your position, you could do five minute safety talks and they could be played, you know, anytime they wanted to by everyone that needs to have their safety meetings. I mean, there's tons of uses for audio, right? It doesn't have right. to be video. A, a machinist understands what CNC bits are. Right. So you're not, I'm not talking to, you know, a 14 year old that has no clue what a CNC machine is. So you can get away with a lot audio if it's geared towards your specific audience without having video, without burning the paper, without burning as much time. Hmm. We may have to talk offline because, uh, you know, <laughs> Collins, we may be able to work something out with Collins Aerospace, uh, you know, that would help you and also help me, you know, send, you know, get the message out and the word of safety. But, yeah. you know, so how, how does, you know, I, I know you, uh, you've published a couple of posts on your Instagram and Facebook in regards to that, you know, you guys have been doing like a couple of free courses or how to get started, basic courses. Hey, this is how we get started. Tell us a little bit about that. I know there's people out there that want to, Hey, you know what, how do I get into this gig? Yeah, so we as a studio, when I started Sitch Radio, maybe it's the Marine Corps mentality, I wanted to know what the mission of this was going to be. And the mission of Sitch Radio is to help you tell your story, whether you're a paid customer or not. If you're in this space and we can help you up the production value and make you a better podcaster, that elevates podcasting at a whole. A rising tide raises all ships. So we do a monthly in-person meetup and, <laughs> and people physically come here and I give between an hour to two hour lecture talk workshop on some aspect of podcasting. We're getting ready to start doing these virtually just to widen that, that breadth. And again, stay true to our mission of helping people tell their stories, so whether they're a paid customer or not, we want to do the industry right. And I'm first to say my way isn't the only way, but it's what I consider the right way. And, you know, with anything with a computer, there's 14 keyboard shortcuts that will accomplish the same thing. But, you know, a lot of people, th this is one thing that blows my mind. A lot of people will record audio, put it in an editor, edit it, export it as an MP3 and upload that as a podcast episode. All audio editing software has a publish feature. And when you publish a piece of audio or video correctly, you embed EXIF data into that file. And what EXIF data is, is the title of your show, the title of the episode, the description, information, email address, when it was published, episode number. When you put in a CD, remember CDs? When you put those in a player, the song title would come up. That's right. EXIF data. Oh. So when a search engine is crawling a website and it hits a mp3 an audio or a video file it goes oh this is a piece of audio let's look at the exif data if it's published properly now it has a title and a description and a published date and all that information to rank and return in search results and if you do it incorrectly it goes oh mp3 let's look for exif no exif let's move on and it does nothing with it and that one fact alone, I had people that were, I have a customer who, when he started with us, he was on like a episode 156, been podcasting for three years, never published his shows correctly. Oh, and one of his big concerns is why is my show not growing? And I, you know, do a little digging and look at his files and look for EXIF data and it's not there. I'm like, well, this is one of your problems and we can go back and fix this, but you're talking about us fixing 156 files that were published incorrectly, you know? So yeah. from the point he started with us, his show's grown, you know, imagine that, but you don't get that kind of detail in most podcast tutorials or most, you know, and right. you know, some people want a podcast because it's a hobby. You know, I like yarn, so I'm going to talk about spun thread and yarn and knitting needles and stuff. And it's just, it's a hobby for them. They, they don't care how many people listen. They don't, they're, they're not looking to monetize. They're not looking to do anything with it other than it's a hobby. Uh, instead of, instead of polishing rocks, I'm doing this. 
and other people, they want their show to grow. They want to use their show as a funnel to trickle potential customers into a sales funnel of some sort and sell them goods or right. they want to get big enough to where they can get advertisers on board. And, you know, it's the basics that we talk about and teach for free. So if anybody listening is interested in it, keep an eye on sitchradio.com. There will be a link in the show notes um, if I do my job correctly. And there's an events tab in the menu and we're, we publish everything we do. We do have paid courses. You know, not everything is for free, but these one hour little mini workshops are. No, and I think, I think it's great. It all makes sense about XF data because I know when I used to burn CDs because now we stream or we, you know, with, with the technology, but I know that if the XF data, when you burn a CD correctly, remember when you used to pop it in iTunes would automatically, would you like me to search? You know the name of the song and blah blah and automatically embed that information onto your cd yep. and so that when you play it you, you will get the, the album cover and all the other uh information so man I just learned instead of cool. instead of 42 track number ones fucking nerd no i'm just <laughs> i just i just nerded out and shit <laughs> that's how that happens yeah. so no, we, we do quite a bit, you know, in addition to us, um, Sitch Radio has gotten involved with Second Chance Studios out of New York. Uh, I am a mentor to the cohort. This is their second cohort and they take recently incarcerated individuals and they, if they're accepted into the program, it's a job. They're actually paid to show up and learn this podcasting, video casting, um, all of that. And they're doing it to slow recidivism, um, you know, in New York and their first cohort, every single graduate was hired by MTV. Damn. And that, that is a cool great is that, idea, dude? man. That's how cool, cool is that? So yeah, I learned about it from, from a studio out of LA, a guy I follow um, and respect a lot in this industry and went, I, because I've stepped away from warrior built. We've talked about that. And I feel it's important to give back in some form or fashion. And I've been missing that since I left Warrior Built, uh, stepped down as the secretary. I'm not a combat vet, so I cannot be a member of Warrior Built, but I served as their secretary for, for a few years. And I, I learned about Second Chance, and I'm like, okay, how cool is that? You know, I think, I think America on a whole is good, but we have our problems, and I think justice reform needs to happen at some level and if i can help slow recidivism i'm i'm on board and i'm contributing back to this industry because the job market for this industry companies are already freaking out because it's already slated by mid 2023 we're going to be hurting for employees audio engineers wow. editors production assistants producers writers and podcasting has gotten to that level you know I, I, the one of the companies I work with, the podcast production team is nine people plus the studio, you know, and a lot of thought, effort, and, and goes into each and every episode. And I think, I, dude, Kim Kardashian just launched a true crime podcast. Oh, wow. Oh. I, a lot of people look at Kardashians and it's like, oh, party girls are only famous because of their dad. Oh no, they're, okay. they're, I mean they're they're mine, business mine. I mean it's dude, yeah. She has an empire. She's studying to be a lawyer. She just started a true crime podcast talking about the injustices in the justice system. She's interviewing the wrongfully accused, the people that have been imprisoned, and then with the you know, justice system went, oops, our bad, you're out now. Um, so it's gonna be kind of a cool spin. And listen, I've never watched the Kardashians. I, I can't say I'm a fan, but I know who she is. But I tell you what, I open Spotify. I usually don't listen to things on Spotify. I opened it up and I listened to the trailer and I went, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it a go, man. It's very well produced. It's compelling stories. It's, it's amazing the content that's out there. No, nah, dude, I mean, listen, you know, we... I mean, not to discredit the you know Kim Kardashian and their family. I mean, their their business sense and business mind. I mean, it's it's I mean, you got to give credit where credit is due, and you got to keep an open mind. I mean, you, you know Rob Deer did right, the skateboarder. He used to do uh, Robin Big on MTV. Uh, you know, Big uh, passed away a couple of years back. You know, 
but the dude has got a podcast and it's about you know uh, it's it's kind of like business as well as motivational and and among many different things and it's it, it, I mean, it's it's good. I mean, I I, I enjoy the shit out of it, uh, you know. And and when I put and I myself, I'm a I'm, I'm a podcast supporter. So you know, when I go on there and on Spotify, I mean, hell, I, I've listened to some of those, you know the the shows that are on Six Radio as well. So I mean, I mean, there's a lot of good fucking content out there that you know you can learn something or you can hear somebody, like you said, somebody sharing their story or someone else's uh, story and giving them. A platform to get their voice out there. I mean, it's, it's only fair. And I, mean, I know you're morphing into. We're looking. I mean, I'm uh, and I'm a recipient, and and thank you for the opportunity. I mean, we're looking at you know NFTs and and moving into you know crypto and the next phase of you know this whole you know technology morphing and next level type of thing. You you, you know what amazes me about that Web three is. I, I don't want to say it's here. There, there are elements that are here. And the RSS standard was written like 2004. Okay. It's getting its first update right now to RSS 2.0. And wow. Adam Curry talking about MTV, Adam Curry, the BJ. Yeah, yeah. Right. He was one of the first BJs. Yes. Oh, I know that He's, dude. His, his nickname in this industry is the Podfather. He was one of the first that went. Yeah. RSS, I have a voice. I like talking into a microphone. I'm going to start a podcast. So what he's done is in the RSS standard, he's added enclosures and I'm going to skip forward. If anybody listening listens to podcasts, say on Spotify, when you open that app up and you push play across the top, does it tell you how many Satoshis you're earning? It doesn't because you don't, okay. they don't, Care about sharing any of the wealth. RSS 2.0 is this value for value system. I listen to all of my shows, except Kim Kardashian's, on an app called Fountain Free. They pay me to listen to podcasts in the app. Now it's like two Satoshis a minute. I'm not going to get rich. I'm not going to be able to retire. But the cool thing is when I'm listening to a show and somebody says something like, earth shattering to me, I can immediately hit a boost button and take some of that money I've earned and or transferred in and give it to them because they just dropped a value bomb on me. That's going to make me better or my business better or my life better. And that's the value for value model. I found value in that piece of content. I'm going to provide value back to this creator with Bitcoin. And it's on the Lightning Network. It's super fast. You get to see how many people support your show, how many people send you boost and boostograms or messages. It's it's crazy. Now, if we go one step farther, when is that going to happen with music? Oh, well, I mean, it's when is I mean, that going to happen with video? And it's it's really crazy because my podcast is about podcasting and. Besides my grandma, um, you know, I have like four other listeners. Uh, That's what I, I say. I'm, I'm working on my third listener because it is my I, wife and daughter. I don't even think you listen, Pacho. But it's about podcasting. You know, it's it's little sessions of the same value I'm dropping in our free workshops. Yeah. But the cool thing is on the Fountain app, I can see exactly how many people are following me. Every minute that they listen to my content. They said, this is so valuable. I want to give him 10 Satoshis per minute that I listen. And these micro payments occur. I mean, and it's cool to see that I've got supporters that aren't just following me, but are willing to monetarily reward me for the value I'm providing them. I mean, how cool is that, man? That's better than a follow on Facebook or Instagram. Yeah, I mean, somebody saying, "Hey, by the way, thanks for thanks for what you're putting out there in your content." Boom! Here, here, here's a little something, something. Yeah, you know, I think that's pretty I mean, cool and neat, dude. And and honestly, I've never taken anything out of it. I I typically give it all back to other creators that I enjoy. But it's cool that it's this ecosystem, even at this microscopic level, you know. And and there's a few RSS 2.0 apps out there that that are on this value for value system, not just fountain fountain was the first one that I found fountain made it really easier for a creator to get involved. 
Um, and that's why I tout Fountain. I'm not paid by them by any means. Right. No. I'm using their app. <laughs> nice. No, I mean, this, this is all. Huh? I, I was going to say, how's your uh, project coming on Uncut? Or are you not ready to talk about that yet? Oh, well, no. Uh, it just, I got sidetracked uh, over the last couple of weeks. Uh, so, but I am, it, it's on my to do list to start, you know, putting the plan. I am already, I already purchased my, you know, my coins and so on and so forth, cool. my, my NFTs for my show, as well as, you know, to be a member. So the next step is starting to develop and, um, and, you know, putting, putting content onto the platform so they can re release it. But I'm excited as well. I mean, it, it's, it's the next level, dude. I mean, if we're doing already art and, uh, you know, you got crypto punks, you know, board apes, so on and so forth. I mean, Jay-Z is getting into this whole thing and as well as some, and already, you know, making um you know sports cards out of these things it's only it's only the next level uh, for us to transition on to that as well so so dude how crazy is it do you follow gary vaynerchuk no no i'm not familiar so dude i i have to take him with a grain of salt i can't listen to, you know he's calmed down over the years so he's more mellow now than he used to be and he's point blank he'll just drop value and somebody asked him one time, why do you give all this knowledge away for free? He goes, 90% of these fucking people are too lazy to do anything with it. What's it matter? No one's going to sure. rise to my level to compete with me. They're too lazy. But he started this NFT project and it was called V Friends, Vaynerchuk. Oh, I know who you're talking about. I know who you're yeah. talking about. Yeah, Dude, he's on my they, LinkedIn feed. Yes, yes. I know. They, I know just launched, they just launched their plushies. So he yeah. went from art to a physical good being sold at Macy's and Toys R Us. So I can buy platypus, whatever that he drew that people yeah. were buying for, you know, $7,000. It's, it's insane that it's coming full circle, but you're right. The sports cards, I got involved with, um, not wax flow, a coin called flow. It's an altcoin, but they've signed with the NBA to do the sports cards. I think they have NASCAR on board. It's like, okay, you know, if if these major sports leagues are going to get involved with this coin and that project, I want in right now before things blow up, you know? It's it's yeah. amazing what's I mean, going on in the world. Yeah, and if they're 0. 0.0000, I mean, now it's now is the time, you know, this is still to the right, and they're as they get closest to that left, and then once they they jump over that you know that digit. You're like, oh shit! I miss, I missed the boat. So right. no, I think, I think, I think we're in a, in a, um, just in the cusp of something exciting when it comes to, and you know, regardless how people may feel about crypto and NFTs and, and whatever, moving, you know, thirty <laughs> years later, hey, who the fuck thought that the the internet? Oh, that's just a thing. You know, Al Gore is just talking shit. Da, da, and I mean, and here we are, right? So. You, you know, it's funny. I was talking to a guest earlier for one of our shows and currency came up and I go, I don't even think I have a bill on me. And I pull my wallet out. I don't have a single U S bill on me I don't. anymore. I have my debit card. I have a credit card. I have my cryptocurrency visa. So when I swipe it, it pulls from yep. crypto. Coinbase. Yeah. I, I just it's, <laughs> it's, I mean, and especially during the pandemic, man, how, do you really want to handle cash? <laughs> no, uh, again, we are at, at the, again, you know, we had the dot com explosion and, you know, and all the other things and all the other fads that we didn't think, or some people didn't think that they were going to stick around. I remember back, you know, and, you know, before we, we, you know, we wrap up, but I remember back in 2018 when bitcoin was kind of getting you know a little bit of and i i spent you can ask my you know motomi who you know you know i i spent hours at night just trying to convert some crypto into ripple because you know ripple is it's a venue for you know american express and all these other banks but i was just and, and you're right and when you learn to do shit yourself then you can eloquently and then you know and people are like, hey man what do you think of this and blah blah but you're right you know, you got to do the hard work and, 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 and learn about things. 
as well, you know, because that's just going to, in the end, you never know. I mean, some might take off. NFTs may take off. Podcasting, you know, boom, next level. And you're already in that, you're already receiving, receiving some residual income, whether it's ca hard cash or electronic. I mean, a wallet is a wallet is a wallet. Is all I'm saying shit. You know, and, and the funny thing is, I want to say it was Gary V that said, I remember, he, he started off with Web3s here. And just like when email came out, people like, oh, who's going to do that? You know, it's just send an envelope, you know, and people resisted email. And now, I mean, everybody has email and they get to it on their, on their smartphone. You know, I, I probably have eight email accounts in one little device here. When the internet came out, business are like, why do I need a website? You know, I mean, it's just this evolution and Web3 is next and, and cryptocurrency is next. The blockchain is here. It's it's not going anywhere. And instead of resisting it, you might as well start learning about it now. Yeah, I think the, I forgot the name of the curve, but um, the, the bell curve that the Internet, you know, had has this is I forgot the name for it, but I'll, I'll remember it. And that cryptocurrency is following that same pattern. And, you know, basically it, it's here to stay. NFTs, all that stuff, it, it's here to stay. But I mean, you know what? Maybe we should talk about, you know, one of our next shows between you, myself, and even Charvettes, who's on here. Shout out to, you know, Shaman. Uh, you know, as we, we should talk about, you know, cryptocurrencies and just have a, you know, have a whole show about it and, you know, how we can benefit from it. But so, Definitely, man. can I bring you back on the show, bro? I Dude, mean, shit, you're in the background. <laughs> Exactly. I'm here every episode. What are you talking about? And, and, and for the record, why I was intrigued to work with you on your show, all the time I spent in the Marine Corps, you're the first freaking chief warrant officer I've ever talked to. I never saw one when I was in the fleet. You know, it's funny. Uh, so how I want it before, you know, we, we punch out, um, and, and Scott Gilman, um, knows this dude uh, he may know this dude. this there was this guy named mark uh, mark foreman and this dude was uh, oh when i came back into the marine corps um you know i had my experience with other warrant officers gunner del uh, del rosario may, wherever he's at cool dude motor t guy uh but um mark foreman dude this guy was as abrasive and i mean old typical old school females didn't belong don't belong in the marine corps that i mean you ask him and he would fucking straight tell you out bum used to bum copenhagen and shit all kinds of stuff and you know one day and i was i looked at this dude and i was working for matt max gilman um he was a staff he was a star the staff sergeant and i was you know a retreat i came back in but I, this dude would just the way he would lean in sometimes on that company commander's ass, dude. <laughs> I was like, I want to be like this motherfucker, <laughs> you know. But another thing that Scott also taught taught me too is that when I became a warrant officer, is like, hey, dude, the ass you chew today might be the one that you kiss tomorrow. So I took that to heart. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's right. That's right. Well, oh thanks for God. having me on, brother. I'm going to remove myself so you can close your show. And links for me are in the show notes. Yeah, everybody, make sure you go check out Brian uh, and, and sitradio.com and the array of and different media shows that uh, that he has. I podcast that. Is, it's, it's a really good one. I, I, love, I really love listening to that one. And my show has been featured there a couple of times. Anyways, but before we pop out of here, I just want to say what's up to everybody out there supporting the show. Matt Max Gilman, Shah Charvetz. Uh, had a great time with Charvettes this weekend at this convention. But hey, if you've been if you've been um, you know having a hard time ruminating, just dealing with all the you know bad shit that sometimes that our stuff from past experience you know has given you, reach out to me, reach out to the show, reach out to a friend, but reach out to somebody. I'm sure you know I'm I'm 100 sure because I've been a recipient of and I've been there before. You know the VA has been a great help, military one source, Tricare. And just reaching out to family, coming out clean and say, hey, I'm struggling because the bottom line is nobody, you know, as great as it is supporting and doing 100 push-ups and walking a mile for blah, blah, and this other shit, you know, I'd rather have you here and be able to tell your story and then be be your uh, your guardian angel or you, you know, listen to what you're going through and we can get through it together. Then so just telling stories that about you, you know, in memory of, you know what I mean? So with that being said, everybody, thanks for supporting the show. 
Make sure you like, subscribe, and follow, and pass me around like a joint at a party. And with that being said, we're going to end next here. So, hoorah, get some Hayats! Semper Fi.